<sighs> so, part two of what is probably going to be a 400 part series of Zeos Reviews wireless gaming headsets. Um, because, and um, these are Audio Technica. Now, for those of you who are not aware, I have a rather weird history with Audio Technica. And this was sent to me by them, by the company, or by at least a company that sends out to reviewers. So they probably didn't, you know, 100% do their research. I mean, look, I have two Audio Technicas on my wall. My wall, I was very proud of that wall. M40Xs, which are like an $80 set of headphones, and you put some big old $60 ZMF pads in them, and they're great. They haven't been replaced yet, even though I said I might replace them, they still haven't been. And the Audio Technica ATH 2000X, ATH AD 2000X. Audio Technica has the worst way of naming things ever. And for the longest time, I've had this headphone, and I just can't remember that it's the ATH G1WL. So um, those headphones are great, and they're up there. Both pads swapped, by the way. Um, however, if you were to look back into this channel's history, you would come across my reviews of the M50. M50X, M70, and uh, there's at least one or two more in there that I absolutely destroyed. Like, I should not have been contacted by anyone from any company. I said, you would never. Just on the fucking sheer risk that it would be that side of the spectrum. Like, exactly. Sides of the spectrum is exactly how Audio Technica is to me. And so they said a gaming headset. I'm like, all right. And it's not a cheap one. Like, I would normally ignore gaming headsets, but we're all stuck inside and I've had this for a while. So before quarantine was a thing, I got these, but K gaming headsets is a whole library of people that I want to speak to. Hey gamers, your headphones fucking suck. Your headphones suck. They got LEDs and they suck. And another thing, a reason I like these is there's no LED glowing. The hyper, I have two of them out right now. Um, HyperX clouds, cloud flights. And those are the, one of the cooler masters. And these have no lights. Those have a light. Those have a light. But I was like, all right, look, they're going, they're Audio Technica. They're a professional company that makes quality products sometimes. And I want to know what their take on a gaming headset is, especially in the price range of like $250. Now, there was a wired version of this for $170, which means you're paying $80 to make them wireless. That's a lot. That's a lot. So, how does it work? Well, uh, I already explained this once in the HyperX Cloud review, but um, let's talk about it again. This doesn't use Bluetooth. It's not a Bluetooth wireless. It's a dongle wireless. So, they use whatever proprietary system they want to use to send. So, there's low latency. Almost no latency. And that's perfect for when gunshots happen or someone's yelling at you or like, oh my god, is that the sound of a knife being drawn literally behind? Okay. Because if it's, you have audio delay, you you, you do this. Slow. Oh, I heard the knife come out way before I died. So Audio Technica, they have the same system, the same wireless, their own proprietary wireless. It's not Bluetooth. The difference is, I want to I want to compare directly to the HyperX Cloud, but I won't. Because I did those on their own. I'll do these on their own. I'll do the cooler masses on their own, and then maybe I'll do a big old shootout of whatever I have in town. They're very light. They're the lightest of the group. These feel like D batteries are powering them on each side. These are these are light. These are real light. They're also the most uniquely designed as far as like, I see hints of Audio Technica's much higher end line. 85,000Xs had a very similar looking headband and sliding structure. Like look how, look how small this is. It's small and light and thin. We have to get to the Beetlejuice cable which is what I'm gonna nickname this black and white fucking wire that goes from one side to the other. Because, you know, a lot of these are all, like here, HyperX, you could see that big red wire, then it disappears, and then it appears again and it goes in there. And if you look at the Cooler Master, um, it just doesn't show it at all. But Audio Technica, in all their vast resources and design prowess, has a black and white wire come out go all the way up, exposed, just hanging the fuck down over here with a tag on it for some reason. 
Like, I don't understand the point of this tag. I didn't cut it off because, I mean, you're going to get it. It's going to have a little flappy tag. And it goes up for approximately three and a half inches. And then it comes back out and goes back to the other one. So, okay. You know, I guess as long as it's not really in the way, it just looks silly because it's, it, it's stiff. It's not even like that loose a cable where it's like flowing. Like, Fostex have that cable, but it's a braided fabric cable. So it's all right. This is just like wire. Whatever. All in the pursuit of weight, weight savings. So the cups are standard audio techno looking cups. Blue ring, there is an LED here indicating that the battery on this one is fucking dying because, well, only 15 hours of playtime, which seems like a lot, but that's 30. So, I mean, we're, we're okay. We're not, we're not comparing directly. We're not comparing directly yet, yet. Besides, these have the weight and they are, and here, here, you ready for some heaping praise? I'm talking about fucking heaps of praise. This is the most comfortable headphone Audio Technica makes. See that? When I do that, when I could do that to a headphone, that means the clamp is linear. Where most headphones, you pick them up and you do that and it starts getting harder and harder and harder. And depending on how wide your head is or how the plastic feels in that particular day, it could be harder or looser. This is 100% linear clamping, which means no matter what size your head is, it'll always be great. It'll always feel exactly how it wants to feel. It's maybe a few grams different. It does swivel like this, and it's a very, very stiff, stiff joint there. It doesn't feel like a, it feels like they're expecting this joint to loosen up in about three years. And when it's loose, that's when it's broken in and can be turned easily. Most other ones just turn. This is like a, like a, you have to physically grab both ends of it. Um, the adjustments I showed before are these little sliders and there's indentations in the back. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. Pad on top is acceptable. These pads, it comes with two pairs of pads. I could have sworn this pad was smaller because it looks smaller. Like it physically looks, if I do that, it looks smaller, but apparently they're the exact same pad. That one's just been stretched out from being on the unit. So they give you a backup pair of pads automatically. So at least for $250, you're getting a backup pair of pads. I know you're dying, relax. Re-fucking lax, that's your short run time. I wanna keep charging you. Um, we'll talk about the pads for a second. These pads are, Glorious is the word. If I sell these in the yard sale on my Patreon or subscribe stars, check out the end of the video for when I do my rant, I might keep the backup pair of pads to try on other things because this is a closed back headphone, but the pads, and they, they actually, it's one of the bullet points they have here. Where does it say it? Breathable, high end, something about breathable pads. Like, yeah, breathable, these pads feel like a completely open set of pads, like something you'd find on a very light, airy headphone but they're still a closed back. You put them on and it blocks sound. And they're not the biggest. They're only a, a maybe a, a, they're actually a perfect two knuckle, but they have the angle. If you don't know about the Yaxi angle, Yaxi pads are what I change a lot of my pads out with. Aren't just flat pads and then scrape down like the Tacones are basically that. Yaxi pads slope down and they get shallower. They get, they go down deeper towards the center. And that is what these have. And when you put those on your ear, with that linear clamp and the almost non-existent weight, these are the most comfortable Audio Technica headphones. I'm talking about up to up and including their five thousands, up and including their most expensive headphones. So Audio Technica, if you're watching this, which you should be, take this, take everything you've done to this, strip out all the aspects of gaming, open these backs, put in high-end drivers, and make the most comfortable set of fucking flagships ever because you're almost there um detachable mic all these have detachable mics i don't really like this one though uh, those use like three and a half millimeters this is a uh two and a half millimeter small one and it's got this big plastic box on it because you have to clip it into this like you plug it in and you think that's it did i push with exceeding high force no you have to, I put it in before like that, and it has to go past the point where it goes click, and then it's in. Otherwise, your microphone will cut in and out. Uh, I'll pull it out for a second just to show what's going on. Oh, also, this is one of the only microphones that comes with a, uh, a little foam guard, 
which it's not a very impressive mic. It does have a little audio technical logo on it, but you're gonna wanna leave this on to block wind. And really microphones don't need to be this long. It's a, that's a little um, spoiler alert for all of you. When I did that um, one more headphone, was it the one more headphone back in the day? Uh, they admitted to me that you don't need a microphone. You get a Bose 700 or a Bose, you know, a uh, Bluetooth headphone to make a phone call. There isn't a stick microphone that comes out. This is all in your heads, gamers. You don't need this. You can have a directional microphone mounted in this. It's only this far from your mouth anyway. Bring it that much closer doesn't, doesn't affect how a microphone could pick up a human being speaking at these volumes. So that said, you know, none of these need to have it, but they has to look like a gaming headset or gamers won't buy it. So gamers, I'm educating you. I'm here to fight stupidity in all forms of the digital landscape. You don't need this shit. You could fucking tie this in a loop like this with a zip tie and make it that long and it'll still work fine. So let's take that off and look at the actual headphone. One of my biggest problems with the design of this headphone is that the right side contains nothing. No controls, no ports, no inputs, Nothing. Instead, Audio-Technica has vouched to put every fucking single thing on one side because, 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 on off for the unit is a switch. There's your input for the microphone. There's a monitor button for the microphone, which also doubles as a pairing button if you need to pair it manually. There's your USB charger, USB micro, not C. Here is the volume knob with surround sound change, which is a push button, and here's your microphone on off. All that in the length of a finger on the bottom of one side of your thing. They didn't need to have a wire. I mean, I guess they just didn't want to bring another wire over. Cause I know the, the HyperX's have a lot of things on one side and then the volume on the other side all by itself. Nice big volume knob. And this is like, a, it's accessible, but it's like, it's everything is tiny. It's so tiny. So we're running, right? We got blue light here, blue, flashing blue, purple, and red. It's, it's just, it's telling you that the, the battery's dying. Um, I'll, I'm gonna put them back on. And we're gonna uh, raise the volume. Well, I went to do it in the other ones. Can you tell which ones I've been using more? That is a thumpy bass, thumpy. Like not the good kind of thump thump, like the, the bad, the ghetto low rider kind of thump thump. Oof. So then I'm going to, but it also sounds a little bit like recessed. If you want to cut to the quick of this, I don't like the way these sound. It's not the worst Audio Technica. I'm not going to throw them on the ground and smash them like I want to do to those M70s. But it's not, and I'm testing with music. Keep this in mind also. I can test a headset meant for gaming with music because you know what? Sounds are fucking sounds. If I know how a woman singing is represented through a headphone or a speaker or an earbud, I could tell you how an explosion, a gunshot, footsteps are going to come because sounds are sounds. I don't need to, I mean, I did I open a game? Yes. Do I need to do it for this review? Hell no. Because I know that when this lady from Kill La Kill is singing and her highs start piercing my eyeballs, I know that's gonna be good in gaming when a, when a gunshot flies over your head because when she sings, she holds a note for a long period of time. Ah, actually, wait, where is it? Like that. that uh, that's long and annoying. But when a gunshot happens, it's like, boop, boop. And a little bit of increased treble is kind of what you want for perception, for footsteps or things. So... Did you notice I didn't point out there's no... There is no three and a half millimeter input. Where the HyperX's are wireless, same way, same system, they have a three and a half millimeter input. So if your battery dies and you just want to use it, you can. And by using it with an amplifier, I could tell you what the DSP correction is doing. Because you plug them in and they're, they're all right. They're all right. They really are all right. They sound good. Then you shut off the amp, you unplug it, you go wireless, and they sound even better because the DSP takes over and it's amplifying and it's doing all the corrections. So knowing that that technology exists, DSP corrections exist, and knowing I can't check that against the stock raw driver because there's no input, I have to assume that the surround sound is what indicates 
um, on and off. So, and in fact, it's probably just switching between two DSPs. So you turn the unit on with a, with, a, with a switch, you turn the microphone on and off with a switch. It's not hard to, it makes a cool beep. What interests me is the surround sound because it claims virtual 7.1. Oh my God, precision audio. Where does it say it? Somewhere it said virtual 7.1. Maybe I just, I read the manual. So the issue is you have to choose between two sound modes on this headphone. Both of them I believe are slightly DSP. There's no way any headphone by default has bass this punchy. And it's almost distractedly punchy, which is odd, because if you're going for the high-end gaming market, usually FPS players want less bass, because bass is a distraction. Now, I discussed also how if you're a normal human being and you just want to play games, can I just fucking play games, Mom? Mom! Mom, can I please fucking just play games? Then maybe, you know, having a little low end for fun, you know, for an explosion that happens or a car that's going is fine. When the real hardcore people come out, they like twist their EQs so that there's only treble, because only treble is footsteps and only treble and CRT monitors and crazy people. But it's still strange that they wouldn't give you the option between the two DSPs, because there's definitely two running, that one is like uh, a more bass light, treble focused sound, and the other one could be the V-shaped, a uh, little bit more of a bass boost and sort of bring out the fun. What your options are, are pounding percussive bass and dull as fuck highs, or pounding percuss percussive bass or nearly teeth shattering highs. So the bass is always there. And you know what? Here's the weird fucking part. One of these is supposed to be surround sound, one of them is not. So you hit the button. So you're playing your music. Let me put something else on. The Turkish March, March by Mozart. Probably never played in a set of uh, ATH G1 WLs, but here on Z Reviews, we like to go the extra mile. So I'm going to press this button. All right, I, I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That crazy bass moves up into the mid bass and inflates that, and then the treble comes up. So it's just more, more of everything. And I'm not sure. I, I literally, is this supposed to be surround sound? Because it's not surround sound. It's not. It is not surround sound. First of all, surround sound in a headphone is a fucking myth. Unless you have multiple drivers, which is a bad idea for several reasons a scientist or myself could go into in grave detail. Join my Patreon. I'll explain it to you. Um, you only have two speakers because you only have two ears. Now, in a room, you could have a speaker in front of you, and you could have a speaker behind you, and you could have a speaker on the top, and you can sort of tell where the sounds are moving. But when you make this space this big, it's really fucking hard to do things physically in that space because you need a minimum of like a 50 or at least 40 millimeter driver, and you can't have multiple 40 millimeter drivers because then they just start stacking onto each other and that's bad. So anything that says virtual surround sound is doing um, Zeos in the future. We'll link in the description of this video. The barbershop effect or the barbershop VR or the barbershop, I forget what it's called. Virtual barbershop, that's it. Put on your regular headphones and put them on and it's in stereo and just watch this YouTube video. And a man will literally walk around your head. Just walk around it. But, but Zeos, this is not 7.1. There's no gaming headset involved. I'm just using some shitty old AirPods. And you could use literally anything to experience that. And that's what they're trying to take advantage of to make a 7.1 surround. Like, there's no fucking dedicated 0.1 subwoofer in here. That's dumb. And even that claims sur surround, is, I'm, just, I'm getting angry because I'm a, I'm a home theater guy. Before all of this, I'm a home theater guy. So when you claim 7.1, you better have a 0.1 sub strapped to the back of my head that's dedicated to low end frequencies. So the point is you hit that button and you only have two options. You either have like the dull but bassy, which is probably what these are mostly without any effects. It's just a bass boost. And then you put it on and it's just everything goes up and it's like, holy shit, please stop. It sounds clear, like literally the when it's off, it's so dull, I can't listen to it. But when you turn it on, it just flies like 30% more treble into the, every orientation. And it's like, ah! 
And in a game, in a shoot, shoot, shoot em up game, it's fine. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I wish that button cycled through three or four. Let me choose my poison. So right now you have like dull and lifeless or base monster all the way up to the mid base and treble murder. And then the problem is there's, there's not much in the way of imaging. Like I'm listening to music and music is a way better judge of imaging than games, which is where you hear between the left and right if something's moving. If You know, you have a left and right speaker or rough and right headphone. And if someone's talking in front of you, those play at the same time and your brain determines it as an image in front of you. Then if that person was to move this way just a little bit, how it changes the volume of this driver just a little bit and how well your brain can determine the movement measures how well the imaging is coming across on a set of headphones. Because it isn't universal. It isn't universally great imaging on everything. How it's presenting it, the frequencies, so many things that I don't even understand psychoacoustics to that point. But the imaging is rather poor. So on a gaming headset, you can't have bad imaging. You could have a tremendous soundstage and a little bit lesser imaging, but these are not very soundstagey, and they're not very accurate as far as imaging goes. Like I'm, I'm listening to like if I put on Yoshi Horikawa's letter, which is a great. I'll link to Zio. So I know you hate this in the future, but in the description will be the barbershop thing and Yoshi Horikawa's letter, and that's the thing on Bandcamp. And he writes across a piece of paper from left to right. And on perfect headphones, you hear him move like this, every millimeter across that paper. And you're gonna be like, ooh. But if you're just listening on regular old headphones or these, you're gonna hear this, left, 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 a little bit quieter left, right. A little bit cool out of the right, right. It never moves. It might jump to the center for a second, but it doesn't smoothly pass across. Which when you're playing a game, because these remember gaming headphones, you want to be able to tell if a person is there, or there, or there, or up fucking there. Now, up's a little harder to do, and we're not going to get into that and how that even works, but great headphones, stacks, things that are $1,000, you could pick out. You could close your eyes and with the right mouse, shoot somebody. So, <sighs> Audio-Technica has almost the build. Almost the build. The weight is just phenomenal the comfort top of its class this black and white wire i'm not on board i mean i'm sure it's it's attributing to the light nate the lightness and the lightweight nature of it but it just feels like an unfinished product with that the all the controls on one side and like yep just give me access to three and a half millimeters so i could run what if the battery dies in this it, they, they it comes with this giant by the way USB cable, and for initially I thought just because some of these headsets you can plug in and it'll act as a DAC amp, you know, with USB. It won't. You still need to use the wireless connectivity, but you can charge it while playing with it. So they give you this cable that's janked to, it's very, very thick. It's a strong cable. But it's so heavy, like I'm afraid I'm gonna break the connector. You give me these lightweight headphones and you don't give me a fabric cable that could, like, look at the stiffness of that. So you just imagine like a, like a six and a half foot length of this attached to your head to try to run it. They, they're... Audio-Technica, when I speak to the guys at CanJam, here's a little inside info. When I speak to the men at Audio-Technica's booth at CanJam, they are the distributors for the entire country. And whenever I give them a suggestion, they say, well, we'll pass it along, but you know, the heads over in Japan just do whatever they want. And that's the problem. We, the, the main gaming force of America, America, or the, most of the world probably has very little influence over what Japan and Audio Technica put out. So we could scream all we want for make this neutral or add this switch or don't fuck up these wires or don't sell M50Xs at all. And they won't listen. But they did get the comfort right. They got the comfort right and they got the weight right. They just didn't get the sound right. Not for 250, not even for 170. I kind of want to, but don't, please, want to hear the non-wireless version of this, just so I can compare. Because these are so fucking nice to wear that it would be like if they just sounded better. And I would have loved to have been plugged this set in to 789 or the Rebel Amp or fucking that and just see if I can 
harness this comfort for just more time than like the 20 minutes I can stand to wear them. So Audio Technica, I, I, I love you sometimes. And I'm just b baffled sometimes. And then sometimes it's pure fucking hatred. M70s should not be a headphone. M70Xs are just, the, the treble I talk about, take that, add another 20% treble, and then just make them uncomfortable while you're at it. Just, just for fun, for funsies. Yeah, I would love to see this. I've seen this, this, the weight, oh, oh my God, it's so light. Like you can't imagine how nice these are to wear. And you won't, because you're not gonna buy them probably, although I will link them in the description. Um, I did do the sound demo. The only thing I didn't do is switch between the two modes because uh, I was just in, I did like nine sound demos that day and I didn't bother pressing that button. So I apologize for that. Just, just know from the description I've given you, you either get dull, bassy, or bassy, more bassy, treble! And that's, that's your two choices. I mean, look, they're not, I'm being very harsh in them because I need to get the point across. But I mean, if you have these already and you've never heard another headset and you're not gonna, you're probably fine. You're probably fine. They do the job. I just wish that, you know, the volume knob was bigger and the switches weren't on the same side and there wasn't this exposed wire. And maybe if it came with a three and a half millimeter and the sound tuning was better or they don't even give you a bag. They don't give you anything for $250. A lot of these other places give you like a carrying case. This is an expensive set. And I'm just gonna, I just rant when it's like, I feel like, I feel like at, at 150 bucks, I could almost say, you know what? They're so comfortable, just run them on the dull mode or run them on the sharp mode and only game with them. But at 250, this better be an all arounder headphone. This better do music, it better do movie, it better do things that the HyperX fucking cloud does. Cause these are not, comf these are not, as comfortable as the HyperX clouds are, and they are fucking comfortable when you change those pads. This, this is just, the weight is just nothingness. <sighs> anyway, um, I'll double check, see if Audio Technica wants these back. I don't think they do. And if they don't want them back, they'll probably end up in the yard sale, which is, it's at one point it's unfortunate, but I'm not gonna use them. As comfortable as they are, just wearing them as earmuffs in the winter is the only reason I would wear these. Yeah, yeah, I know you're dying. You're, you're, hopefully you die quickly and then they replace you with something that sounds just to the cost. It needs to sound good in everything and then I will endorse it. If it only sounds good when you're playing the most extreme games or you don't care about sound, then... Sound demo in the description. If you want to support videos like this and my mad ravings, please think about supporting on Subscribestar or Patreon. Um, both of those have benefits that I will list now. If you'd like to shut this video up before I start lifting benefits, too bad. $5 tier lets you buy things like this in the yard sale. First to the 10th of every month, I gather up items that have either been sent to me or that I've purchased or that people have donated to the channel, and I throw them up, and it's a blind sign auction that starts at zero. And if you live in the continental United States, I ship to you for free. And if you live outside the United States, I pay half of the shipping. So if you think these are worth $18.31, and you join my $5 Patreon, you could say $18.31, and you paid $5, so for $27, you get to buy these, and I ship them for free in the US. Um, the other benefits are ask me any questions you want on platform, which takes a while for me to get back to everyone. You can see these reviews early, because God knows there's gonna be so few of these left in stock after this review goes live, oh, the world's gonna jump at it. Well, those are the ones you wanna see early. But um, see these reviews early, Participate in the yard sales, ask me any questions you want on platform. The $10 higher tier on either Subscribestar or Patreon puts you into the behind the scenes private Telegram chat where I um, answer questions 175,000 times on my phone every day. And those people in there will talk you down from almost any ledge and onto an even higher ledge of spending. So watch out, watch out for those guys. They're, they're, they're way too passionate about audio. I'm sort of into it, but they're really into it. They got tattoos and stuff. So if you would like to meet those people, feel free to join my subscribe to our Patreon at $10. Um, there are higher tiers, which will be used in the future as a, in a hardware swap. And something like that might be where like these end up or those or something that I'm like, I really want people to try this to experience it, but you know, you can't force people to buy things, but at the higher tiers, I could just have a box ship from person to person. As soon as there's no Rona on everything, we can, we can arrange for that. 
Um, check out Hi-Fi Guides in the forums. Currently, Hi-Fi Guides, the uh, website that I run with uh, DMS, does not support wireless headphones. And there's only one or two gaming headphones on here, the Cooler Master MH751s and things like that. But uh, you basically put in, you have in-ears, you have speakers, we have subwoofers. I love the subwoofer page because look how much bass is there. God damn it, that image link is broken. It's always a work in progress, so I'll get back to that. But uh, attached to this site, which has beautiful controls to let you pick how much, like, I want less, and I want, I want a ported sub. There you go, there's your only choice. Is the Hi-Fi Guides Forum, which has a gaming section. Boom, gaming audio, competitive, casual, and streaming. Although I don't know what the difference would be. I guess streaming has different things. Uh, we have wonderful mods there. They're like always making suggestions, always keeping the place going and clean. Listening to tonight has a 1700 posting, the music talk. I don't appreciate how the what did you buy today thread has 3,900 posts because that means people are spending way too much on audio. You need like three headphones and this unfortunately is not one of them. So if you'd like to check out the sound demo for these, it is the exact same track list as that. And unfortunately not that because I wasn't ready to do that yet. But um, yeah, sound demo in the description. The sound demo will come out on this channel tomorrow. So I'm not gonna say that thing that everyone else says in their videos because I literally haven't for six years. But if you want to see that video, check back this channel, and you can. Oh, and that wallpaper. Every video has a different wallpaper, and every video wallpaper is available in the description. Unless you're lazy, in which case you join the Patreon or subscribe star and you get access to the database with over a thousand wallpapers, because I've been doing this a lot. And uh, you could look up the original artists and support them directly like I do. Um, yeah, we're done here, we're done. Audio Technica, look. I honestly, I, I love your company. I love some of your turntable stuff, but these, they're so close, yet so far. It takes a lot to impress the Zeos. I mean, sometimes, but other times it just takes, it just, it's more of a disappointment thing. He's disappointed me. See you tomorrow.